Welcome to Business Talk, presented in collaboration with the University of Rio Grande and the Ohio State University South Centers, from the heart of Southeastern Ohio at the University of Rio Grande TV studio. Our goals are simple, promote the University of Rio Grande and the Ohio State University South Centers, as well as advocate local small business and their support organizations. More importantly, promote Southeastern Ohio as a wonderful place to live, explore, and learn. There are many different ways you can find us. The University of Rio Grande Cable Access Channel 17, live online at blogtalkradio.com, and on YouTube if you are unable to catch our show live. Introducing our co-hosts, Jason Winters, Mike Thompson, Patrick Dengel. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey, welcome back to our show. You know, I've always said trees are next to people, one of the greatest assets that we have in Southern Ohio. And trees come in all different kinds of uh, uh, varieties, different kinds of shapes and sizes. And, and trees are one of those items that I think we as human beings use uh, to our benefit. Uh, they can shelter us, they can uh, uh, give us uh, works of art and things of that nature. And today we have an individual who has immersed not only himself, but a business into uh, carving out of trees, fine woodworking, fine pieces of uh, art. Uh, they range anywhere from uh, uh, flooring, cabinets, furniture as you're going to see in this show and it's our fortune to have Mark Nelson. Mark Nelson has Nelson Furniture and Sawing. Uh, it's a company located in Thurman right next to, to Jackson and he's going to be talking a little bit about uh, his business and how he hopes to one day be the uh, individual that everyone will come to and shop because he has that beginning to end cycle of uh, taking trees and doing whatever they need, need to do. Mark is also an assistant professor at the University of Rio Grande, Rio Grande Community College, and has helped many other students develop the ability to take a plain piece of wood and make it into a work of art. So, Mark, welcome. Thank you. It's, it's good to have you on our, our program. Let, let's begin by talking a little bit about your involvement and what led you to, to start Nelson Furniture and, and Sawing. Um, well, I guess uh, I, I came to school at Rio Grande and I uh, went through the woodworking program and uh, I've always had a connection uh, with woodworking and uh, working with my hands, building things I've always has always been a passion of mine. Uh, and and transitioning that into using wood as my medium has uh, kind of been an easy transition for me. And um, kind of how you alluded to the, the, the attraction of trees and, uh, you know, in, in human nature has, has really what kind of drives me uh, to pursue my craft and continue that uh, in, a, in a profession, so. so and, and my understanding is you, uh, we're, we're born in Portsmouth, yes. and then with your family, you moved up to Lake Erie, Marblehead. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, a lot of family in Minford, Ohio area, Portsmouth, Ohio, and uh, we moved to Marblehead, Ohio in um, the early 90s, and I, I, I grew up there, I would say, and uh, finished high school and um, got to live on the lake, completely different than here. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of trees and hills and there. It's a lot flat and water, so very, very <laughs> different. Uh, but it's a great place to grow up. And then uh, you had an opportunity to attend University of Rio Grande, Rio Grande Community College's yes. uh, uh, technical program, the Fine Woodworking Program here at the university. Yes. Well, that has had a lot of really great history yes. uh, in, in helping students understand uh, how to how to take wood and make it into an art. Yeah, I like to think of myself as a good example of what I try to strive now that I'm in the program as as a teacher. Um, you know, I, I often reflect on my own personal uh, uh, kind of uh, travels, as, so to speak, in my profession as 
something I can explain to students and, and you know these are the these are the tools these are the skills that you will um, develop and learn um, while you're here to pursue your profession or whatever avenue uh, you want to pursue in woodworking. So I feel like I'm a good example of that. Uh, I had a passion for woodworking. I got into woodworking. Um, I devoted my college years to that and and now am able to kind of uh, translate that for other people, uh, which is I feel is an honor and a privilege and it's and it's fun and it's rewarding. Yeah. So uh, it's it's really enjoyable. You know, when I've uh, played around with making things of wood, uh, it seems that regardless of my goal to start a, uh, a, a bench or a table, it always ended up as an ashtray. <laughs> so, well, uh, you know, it's, okay. it's, not, an easy, yeah, <laughs> it's right. not an easy profession because it requires a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, it's Nelson Furniture and Sawing. Yes. What, what do you mean by that? Um, well, the furniture side is pretty self-explanatory, I guess, to an extent. Uh, I do anything custom, and most of that, uh, like I said, my passion was for building things, and so I'm building things out of wood, whether that's a piece of furniture, or chair, table, desk, um, cabinets, anything along those lines. The sawing side of it, um, I got into about f four years ago. Um, what I like um, about that and what that involves is utilizing urban timber mostly um, not exclusively urban timber but a lot of times it is and you take a tree that might not be uh, stereotypically designed or uh, perfect in the eyes of industry standards for a log or a, what we call a saw log so a large sawmill is is dedicated to volume and yield and what they can obviously uh, produce out of that um, and so they have stipulations on these trees. What I can do on a small scale with a, what, I, what we call a portable bandsaw or a band mill is take these trees that might otherwise be destined to the landfill or firewood or things that kind of underutilize um, the, the wood in the tree itself. And I can take those things and take these trees and turn them into usable, uh, beautiful pieces of, of furniture or uh, woodwork, uh, if you want to call it that, and uh, really utilize this tree to its fullest extent. Well, it, as a matter of fact, uh, you, you brought some pictures. Yes. I, I would like to see the, the band mill. Sure. Uh, now, we're, uh, you, you were very kind enough to bring a lot of different pictures. I so, have a lot of pictures. Um, you know, our, our technicians, Luke and Mike, are are uh, uh, taking a look at, at some of the pictures and we'll show you here in a minute. Uh, but the, the band mill oftentimes, uh, well, here's, here's uh, one of the pictures. What are, what are we looking at? Okay, so here's basically the machine um, uh, in essence. And, and you have a, you know, if, you've, if anybody's familiar with a normal small bandsaw, this is all that it is, it's just enlarged. And so instead of moving your workpiece through a bandsaw on a small scale like you would in a wood shop, we're moving the saw through the wood. Wow. Um, and so it's fully hydraulic uh, and I say automated, not necessarily fully automated. Uh, and in fact, the, the, I don't have control over it, the computer controls it. Um, but the automation um, allows me to hydraulically control things. And so I can put a pretty good size log, like this log right here was roughly three feet in diameter. Huh. Um, and the yield out of something like this is uh, particularly large. You, I got a lot of uh, six by six beams out of that and some one by stuff. Um, and that particular tree came out, it was a single tree um, that came out of a yard in Oak Hill. Wow. Um, and wow. so a tree service cut it down. Um, they were either going to have to leave it or somehow dispose of it. And well, you, you, you know, Mark, we have, we have heard about uh, uh, certain kinds of trees, like cherry trees. Sure. Uh, they uh, create really great pieces of work of art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, we have other trees that likewise, and it really depends upon how you saw it. Is that right. correct? Yeah, uh, there there are some techniques and there are different species. And I guess to allude uh, back to the fact of utilizing these trees that might not be used uh, in industry standards, you know, you have these 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 uh, popular species like cherries and oaks and walnut and these things that we've all heard of. 
Well, with a small scale operation like mine, I can utilize a lot of other species that might be considered junk or um, unusable to industry. So you're talking um, trees that might grow into a fence row and, and, and a lot of uh, you know, agriculture around here, it might be a nuisance tree, it might be locusts. Uh, locust is a really beautiful wood. It's, it's hard as a rock, it's great for fence posts, it's decay resistance, uh, but at the end of the day it's, it really has a nice warm uh, patina to it as it ages. Um, persimmon, uh, sassafras, just to name a few that a lot of people don't really think about sawing into usable lumber. Yeah, I, and it, it's rather interesting. The way you cut uh, a log right. uh, really allows you to see the different grains sure. and the, the artistic kind of thing. Yeah, and, I, and I've got a few different oh, pictures, here's, and, here's and a, this is a good example of utilizing a branch. This was actually a small uh, maple branch that came off of a larger tree, um, and where that Y uh, in the tree um, grows, particularly, there's some really interesting grain there. Now, this tree was, uh, there, or this particular piece, this branch, was really firewood. Um, it's a small piece. I held on to it for whatever reason, and I thought, man, there's got to be something interesting in that. And I held on to it for years, and I have plenty of firewood and other things, um, so I try to utilize as much as I can. And, and this is how it turned out, which en ended up being a really interesting uh, little rustic bench. And uh, this is a, that's a good example. Uh, oh, here's a, this I, particular piece um, actually was part of a provost project we did last year, and um, with some of the university uh, fine woodworking students. These this is a this is a perfect example of utilizing uh, waste wood. This came out of the uh, refuge pile um, that the university maintenance and grounds, uh, where they they store a lot of their uh, debris um, from campus. And we went through and found some logs and some pieces that we put on the sawmill. And if I, I don't think I have any before pictures of the pile, but it looks like a giant brush pile. And so to get this piece out of a giant brush pile, uh, to me, is what's really wow. compelling. That really looks nice. Um, what, what is the hourglass at the bottom? That, that's a dovetail. And so what that does is it's an it's a attractive element, but it also serves a purpose. So sometimes with utilizing this, uh, this urban wood, it's not necessarily uh, perfect in the fact that it doesn't have cracks and checks and uh, defects like that. But we can take that defect and what that's doing is actually holding that crack from separating any further. Yeah. Uh, so it also is, is, is nice to look at, but it also um, has some structural uh, quality to it as well. Hmm. And the back piece on this, and if you can kind of see some of that uh, kind of shiny ribbon along that back, um, you, were, you were talking about how we change the way they look by the, the way the grain pattern looks by the way it's sawn. Um, that is what you would call quarter sawn. So to achieve those patterns in that board, the tree was positioned in a certain way where the annual rings were perpendicular to the face I and it see. achieves that pattern. I see. The seat pattern is out of the same tree, but you see it looks dramatically different. Sure. Um, but that's all of the positioning of how it was sawn on the sawmill. Right, mill. right. And uh, somebody that can saw and understand the different uh, ways to, to generate that grain is worth their weight in, in gold. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, be, because... Uh, I've had the opportunity to look at some of the larger sawmills, and the one that does the cutting really makes, yeah, makes the yeah, you, you really, um, you know, and, and especially when you're talking uh, on a large scale like that, you, um, are, you are the money maker, so to speak, yes. for, for the operation in a sense, because you are the one deciding on how much yield. If you make a miscut, you waste wood. Uh, which is wasting money. If there's a board that you could have gotten out that had better value than the than the cut that you made, um, you might you know you might make a miscut and uh, you can't get that back. I mean, it's hard it's, it's hard to do that. Uh, so here, uh, this is an interesting piece. This is actually what you call a burl. So this is a, a birch tree, and what you're looking at is a large um, growth. And and to put it in perspective, I don't know if 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 uh, anybody can see this, but that thing was probably around two feet in diameter growing off the side of a tree. Huh. Um, what that is, is it's basically just a genetic defect for whatever reason or some, for, for some reason that tree decided to grow that node or that, that uh, growth on the side. 
and it um, is very desirable because it has really unique grain um, most likely inside of there. I have not, I've, I've, sucked, I've cut this one uh, and it's drying, but I haven't cut into the, the heart of the burl yet. I uh, haven't really decided exactly what I'm going to do with it. Uh, turners, people that do bowls and uh, pins and things of that nature, gun stocks, knife stock handles um, are really attracted to burls. Um, so it's really, it's nice when you get a really large one like that. It's, and and so you said, what, what kind of tree was it? That was that? a birch, a white, a birch? I believe it was a white birch. So are, are birches known for burrows? Um, or all trees? All trees. Um, hmm. I'm not really sure, I guess, if, if there are certain trees. You see it a lot in maples, uh, but all trees are susceptible to it. Uh, huh. It's just, it's just for whatever reason, uh, genetically it decided to, to alter and, and grow that. So. Um. Let, let's take a look at another picture. Uh, you know, some of the pictures. Now, this is nice. Uh, yeah, this is actually a desk um, that uh, we, is, is in our woodworking program here at Rio. The, uh, this is kind of the quintessential piece to our second year in our program. So this wow. is looking at a, a um, close-up of the gallery on the inside of a desk. So this would have a slant top that folds down. And, um, you know, there's a little, that's obviously a door that you're looking at. And that grain pattern inside there, this is walnut, by the way. Um, that grain pattern is the similar All grain pattern. All of it pattern. is wal walnut? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so what's interesting with wood, and a lot of people don't understand, is uh, wood in, inherently, darker wood ages lighter and light wood ages darker. Um, it's just basically like a suntan. And so cherry gets a little bit darker. Um, and walnut, here's another walnut piece. Uh, this is uh, somewhat of a reproduction, uh, loose reproduction. This is called a spice box. But, uh, but nice you can see the different grains. Yeah, and, and that grain pattern was similar to that little bench that had the Y. Um, uh -huh. So all that really neat looking grain is, is the Y. And so you're able to, you know, in that bench, you utilize the whole piece. And a piece like this, we would slice that really thin and make our own veneer. And so we get more gain out of that that Y and that that grain, and we're able to apply it in mm. more places. There there seems to be two kinds of furniture makers: uh, those that put the whole artistic value of that individual and create a work of art, art like, for instance, this. this is yeah, this, this is an interesting. This um, this is a, a interesting piece. It is more on that um, more artistic side of uh, of the spectrum. Um, this is kind of a, a way to utilize, and what I had here was I did some dining room tables with this, and this was this is maple, and what what I would call close to a bird's eye maple, so it almost looks like it's boiling and bubbling in the grain, yeah. Yeah. and so I had all these drops, which are the off cuts of making these tables, and I thought, what am I going to do with it? And I ended up uh, coming up with this piece just to utilize those. Uh, and it's kind of a neat, and it, it really just highlights the, the grain, and that's what's the most interesting part hmm. is the, you know, that was a tree, and uh, that's, wow. that was inside the tree. Wow. And, and he, here's a interesting table. Uh, this is maple as well, and there's, an, there's uh, another version of the maple. It's curly maple, and you can see that on the, the uh, end uh, closest uh, to the picture, uh, to the end of the picture there, the grain, it's, it's what we call curly maple. Some people call it tiger maple. Um, and it just has those kind of striped looking patterns. Here's the same table uh, in the shop, just a different shot of it. And so you're really able to utilize and, and bring out the, the grain with uh, some different dyes and stains and things. And I hope to get into the stains a little bit. Sure. But, but in, it, it is an interesting to note that really this table is a composite of about six or seven different pieces. Yes, sure. And the ability to use the tools to fine sand it and and create uh, a, a complete project is just fascinating. Yeah, you know it's it's really fun, especially for me uh, on the saw sawmill side of it. You really see the process starting from the beginning, um, and it's it's a it's a really important part of understanding where these things come from and and how you know how the process is is that. Some people get kind of disconnected with the product um, and, and the material. And so I enjoy being able to, to make that connection for them and, and say, here is, here is your tree. Um, I'm physically sawing it up. 
I'm making boards out of this tree. Hmm. Uh, it sounds like a it sounds kind of a like a simple process, but a lot of people, like I said, are disconnected from that. Sure. And so, sure. Um, you know, it's like the same token, like where your food come from comes from, kind of a sure. thing. And so you're able to show them that, and they become involved, and they become uh, rooted in the whole entire process, and take and take value, uh, more value in the in in product. So so. You know, we looked at the artistic side, and you do very well on the artistic side. But you also have a um, a business side that allows uh, commercial uh, individuals, like contractors or homeowners or things of that nature, to to take some of your artistic work and be able to create it in their own, own home environment. There's many people that love. Uh, to decorate their home in, in wood. Do we have a couple pictures of, of uh, uh, what you did to where it's practical? You know, yeah, sure. who, who can afford uh, a $50,000 mantle? Right. Well, so here, you know, and, and what I think you're alluding to is the more practical side yes. of things. And, and yes. we say, you know, in our home, we are able to put a little bit more emphasis and value on on. Uh, restoring or decorating our home. Um, this is this is on one far end of the spectrum. Uh, the this is a kitchen remodel, wow. and uh, these uh, kitchen cabinets um, were done. Uh, basically, this was a complete gut. Um, we go in, and uh, the flooring. Uh, we'll have a couple pictures where you can see the flooring a little bit better. Um, but this is completely customized. So what you're seeing in wood, other than the furniture in here, but all the trim, the crown molding, the door moldings, uh, base molding, uh, window casings, um, cabinets, and the flooring. So the flooring actually was repurposed, uh, reclaimed wood from an old log cabin um, that was milled into tongue and groove flooring that was laid. And so this uh, really uh, turned out to be a really nice space. The great thing and what I really take as, uh, pride in in this space particularly and all this all the things that I try to do whether it's in my uh, residential work cabinets uh, flooring trim or even on the furniture side is it is practical it's usable yes it looks beautiful um, but it's it's a usable kitchen they use this every day they cook in it they they sit around the table um, it, you know you want to be careful on that line of artistic uh, expression right. and right. and practical use and so this yes. is a good combination of that be, because everyone loves to show off uh, our, our homes uh, and the different components that we have in the homes, but we also live there. Right. And I have found that molding, just the uh, different kinds of molding that we have, really uh, refurbishes a, a home. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. it goes, uh, there's some little things that you can do that go a long way. And uh, here's another practical aspect. Um, this is a Bob Evans uh, Museum, and uh, what I was involved with in this project was the actual door that you're looking at. And so the, the front door is completely redone, and I've got a picture in here somewhere, uh, if Mike can find it, is actually the shell of this door. It should be way down at the end, um, this door in the building process. Um, before it was actually with the panels and uh, the paint on it. Uh, but this is another practical aspect. This is an entry door that is used every day. Yeah. Um, in this particular nice. case, it needed to fit the style of nice. the house and, and uh, function of the house. Hmm. And so, you know, as on a custom level, you know, you're able to do that. Yeah, so here's a shot of the frame um, wow. in, in part of the construction. And so what's really neat to me is some people don't realize, like, this is all woodworking. This is all part of that, you know, right. whether it's laying hardwood floor or trim or cabinets. Um, you know, you can, you can really utilize these, these trees and do a lot with it. Uh, we're running out of time, but I sure. did want to talk a little bit about staining. You know, okay. The question is, do we paint over wood or do we stain it? I am under the belief that it depends on what you want and what you're trying to achieve the end result. I, I know a lot of people that would would turn over if you told them that you were going to paint wood. <laughs> Some wood looks beautiful on its own. Yes. Some wood looks beautiful painted. Yes. And uh, that kitchen was a good example of that. Or the door, um, it would not have fit the space had it been stained or, or finished in a different way. So 
uh, the project uh, and the the product at the end have a lot to do with it. And there and there was a couple in there that had that distress motif and and that kind of distressed look painted and and kind of rubbed through. It done properly. It is what we're trying to mimic is years of age and people like that. They like that look. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with painting. And I don't you know. If, if it achieves what you want it to look like at the end, then um, then that's the end result that you need that, to go with. That so. is that is true. And, uh, you know, as, as we look through your, the neat thing about this is that you have on the website and in Facebook and, and several other places, Instagram, I believe. Instagram, yes. Uh, you have a variety of different pictures to show individuals. Yes. Yeah. Not only that artistic but that practicality right, and I, I think that's very very important as a, a business yeah. we're always looking at ways that we're able to do things without charging our customers an arm and a leg right uh, all of us love the kinds of things I know if my father were alive today he would be coming out to your place because he loved the the process of what you do sure. and down in southern Ohio, especially with the University of Rio Grande, it's fortunate to have individuals like you, uh, like Eric and, and some of the others, have that passion for creating from work, uh, wood, a work of art. Sure. Uh, I, I believe uh, you can be receive on your, your email or there is a phone number in there, I believe. Can we show that again? Uh, that's yep. the best way to get in touch with you sure yeah if uh, anybody has anything like i said any uh what, what i really thrive for is that custom uh custom project and uh solving a problem and and you know using wood that might not get utilized in other sure. ways so. sure well i i want to want to thank you very much for uh visiting us i hope you do come back sure i appreciate the time and uh, it was a pleasure to be here well uh from the things that you do, it must be great to be an artist. Uh, it, I love it. I, I, I'm, I'm doing it. I, I can't think of anything else I would, I would rather do. So. Well, very good. I, I know that uh, your wife, your three children, and you are very proud of the business. Yes. Uh, upcoming, we, we have a number of different uh, new shows that are going to be uh, coming out here at the uh, 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 Channel 17 Rio. So continue to stay tuned. We have uh, uh, many different things that uh, uh, working with students and working with, with uh, the staff here at the University of Rio Grande and Ohio State University. Uh, we thoroughly enjoy giving you great information. I'm Patrick. I'm Mark. Thank you and have a great afternoon.